In this lecture video, we will talk about connective tissues. Connective tissues are going to be found all throughout the body. They are the most abundant type of tissue in the body, widely distributed, and as you will see, there is a very large variety of connective tissues. The functions are going to be different depending on the connective tissue. As you will see, different connective tissues have different functions. Here are some of the general functions. Binding and support, protection, insulation, and transportation. What you find with connective tissues is that there's this extracellular material. So there's going to be this ground substance, this matrix, and within that matrix, you're going to find cells, fibers, and things like that. Some connective tissues have more extracellular material than intracellular material. So some of them are going to be more of this matrix. You might wonder why we put all these different tissues that appear very different and have different functions in the same classification. The answer to that is because they all come from the same origin. All connective tissues come from this embryonic tissue called mesenchyme. You could think about mesenchyme as this tissue that contains stem cells that can differentiate into any connective tissue in the body. And connective tissues are going to have varying degrees of vascularity, which means that some of them are going to have high blood supply and some are barely going to have any blood supply. This is a general model of a connective tissue. It's not something you're going to see on your exam, but it gives you an idea of what a connective tissue is going to look like. You're going to have the ground substance here, this light blue, and within this ground substance you have fibers. So here's some fibers over here, here's some fibers over here. Um, you're going to find different cells, different white blood cells, and this, these are ad adipocytes, so different cells here. And this is, again, just a general model of a connective tissue, but nothing for you to memorize. Again, the connective tissue is going to have this matrix, which is going to have ground substance. This is going to be unstructured material that fills the space between the cells. What that ground substance is made of depends really on the connective tissue. And within connective tissue, you're going to find fibers. You're going to have collagen fiber, elastic fiber, or reticular fiber. You should know the function of these fibers for your exam. Collagen fibers are going to be strong and tough and they provide strength. They are thick as compared to the other fibers. They're going to be wavy and white and they stain pink. So the main function of collagen fibers is to provide strength. Elastic fibers are going to be these long, thin fibers that allow for stretch and recoil. So elastic or elastin fibers pretty much bring flexibility to the connective tissue. They're going to be wavy or curly, and they're yellow, but when you stain them, they stain dark. Reticular fibers are going to be found in certain connective tissues, not all of them, usually in connective tissues that are involved with your lymphatic system. Structurally, they're very similar to collagen, but they're going to be more branched. They're very branched and they form a network. So they um, allow this spongy connective tissue to form. And this network allows housing of different cells within the tissue. Wrinkling of skin 
is actually due to degeneration of these fibers as you age. Again, here is um, elastin fibers. Typically they stain dark and they're gonna be thin. And then these are collagen fibers that are gonna be thick and they stain pink. We talked about mes mesenchyme. This is undifferentiated connective tissue. It's an embryonic connective tissue that contains stem cells. And you will hear when we talk about cells of the connective tissues, you will hear the term blast and site. Blast means to produce and site means to man maintain. So if I talk about chondroblasts, those are going to be cells that produce cartilage matrix. If I talk about chondrocytes, they're going to be cells that maintain that matrix. So blast is to produce and site um, cells that maintain. So here are some of the cells. Fibroblasts are cells that give rise to fibers. Fibrocytes help maintain them. Chondroblasts give rise to cartilage matrix and chondrocytes are cells that are going to help maintain them. Hemocytoblasts, these are cells that are going to give rise to blood cells. So this will include red blood cells and white blood cells. Later on, we'll talk about osteoblasts. These are cells in your bones that create bone matrix. Osteocytes are going to maintain bone matrix. And adipoblasts, these are cells that give rise to um, fat tissue and adipocytes maintain them. This chart over here just shows you that mesenchyme is gonna be this undifferentiated connective tissue that's going to give rise to all the connective tissues that we're going to talk about in this lecture. Now connective tissues are going to be divided into four classes. First we're going to talk about connective tissue proper, next we're going to talk about cartilages, and then bone, and then blood. Again all of these are connective tissues including blood. And the reason blood is considered a connective tissue is mainly because it comes from mesenchyme. So first, let's talk about connective tissue proper. Again, these are all connective tissues. Here are the four classifications. First, we're going to start with connective tissue proper. There's going to be two types of connective tissue proper. You're going to have this, these loose connective tissues and these dense connective tissues. So all together, there's going to be six types of connective tissue proper. We will talk about each and every one. Here are the three loose connective tissue propers. Areolar connective tissue, adipose connective tissue, and reticular connective tissue. First, let's talk about areolar connective tissue. This is what it looks like when you look at it under the microscope. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of cells here as we saw with the epithelial tissue. It's mostly gonna be ground substance, lots of fibers, and as you can see here, these are nuclei of cells, some cells. Areolar connective tissue is gonna have this gel-like matrix, and what is unique about areolar connective tissue is that it contains all three fibers. This is gonna be the only connective tissue with all three fibers. So it's gonna have collagen, elastin, and reticular connective tissue. You're gonna find there are fibroblasts there. These are gonna be the cells that give rise to new fibers and you will find some other cells such as macrophages, mast cells, and some white blood cells. So these are for the purpose of um, protection and immunity in your body. 
the main function of areolar connective tissue is to wrap and cushion organs. This tissue is going to be the most widely distributed connective tissue in your body. You can pretty much find it everywhere. It's going to be wrapped around your organs. There's going to be a little bit of it wrapped around your blood vessels. And what's interesting is even in your muscles, it will be a little bit of it is going to be wrapped around your um, muscle cell fibers. So very abundant. You find it just about everywhere. And um, if you ever bought chicken or chicken breast and you notice that white stuff that's attached to the chicken, but it's not, it doesn't really look like fat, but it's some sort of tissue, that's areolar connective tissue. For your exam, you should, you should understand the description, function, and location. So again, as you could see here, gel-like substance has all three fibers in it and um, not a whole lot of cells, mostly fiber and ground substance. The main function is to wrap and cushion organs and it plays an important role in inflammation and kind of holding tissue together. It holds a lot of fluid. So um, this is kind of going to be important for places in your skin that are avascular. So your skin is pretty much the top layer of your skin doesn't get a whole lot of blood supply. So having a little bit of aerial tissue underneath that is going to help keep it alive and nourished. Location, again, this is the most widely distributed connective tissue in your body. It's, you're going to pretty much found, find it almost everywhere, wrapped around your organs, um, under your skin, everywhere. Here are two other pictures. This is a lower magnification of an areolar connective tissue, and this is a higher magnification. I can tell you this, um, in about nine to 10 years of teaching, almost every lab exam that I've seen has had areolar connective tissue because it's easy to find, it's easy to identify, and it is widely distributed. Next, we're going to talk about adipose connective tissue. This is basically fat tissue. It is going to have um, a matrix that is similar to areolar connective tissue. However, it contains a lot more cells. It's going to have these cells called adipocytes that are going to be closely packed together. The main function of it is going to be to reserve food, to insulate, uh, prevent heat loss, and it does play a role in support and protection. So for example, your kidneys don't have much of bones around them. So there's going to be thick layers of adipocytes, adipose tissue wrapped around the kidneys to protect them. Again, this is pretty much um, widely distributed, but not as widely as areolar. You're going to find there's going to be adipose tissue under your skin, around your kidneys, um, within the abdomen, in the breasts, and some other areas as well. And um, it does serve to um, deposit to, to keep nutrients for highly active organs. Again, here are, you want to go over description, function, location before your exam. When you look at it under the microscope, you're going to see that it kind of looks like bubbles when you look at it. You're going to see a lot of adipocytes. And what's unique about this is that if you pay attention, you'll notice that the nucleus, the nuclei are not in the middle. They're going to be pushed to the side because the cell is filled with um, fat droplets. So these dots that you see here, these are the nuclei of the cells and they've been pushed to the sides. And again, the nuclei would be like this, pushed to, over to the side, and then the cell is filled with um, lipid droplets. 
here is a high magnification. Next, we're going to talk about reticular connective tissue. Um, this connective tissue is found mostly in lymphatic organs. And lymphatic organs are closely related to your um, immune system, your immunity. Reticular connective tissue, as the name implies, is going to have a lot of reticular fibers in it. These fibers are going to be very branched, as you can see here, and they provide a network. Within this tissue, you're going to find lots and lots of white blood cells. Like, as I said, these are found in your um, lymphatic organs, and your lymphatic organs are involved with immunity. So it makes sense to find white blood cells there. There's going to be this loose ground substance, and you're going to find lots of reticular fibers. So they stain dark. Um, there's this tissue is going to be soft and a little bit spongy, and you find it again in um, organs that are involved with your lymphatic system. So, for example, well, your lymph nodes, your bone marrow, the spleen. These are all going to be made out of reticular connective tissue. And here is another picture. Again, you, you should be able to also identify these tissues on your lab exam. This is a low magnification here, so it's kind of hard to see the cells. And this is a high magnification over here. You could see these networks of fibers and lots and lots of cells. So what we just talked about were all of these. Loose connective tissues within connective tissue proper. Now we're going to move to dense connective tissues. So we're still on connective tissue proper. Now we're going to talk about these um, connective tissues that are more dense, they're more durable, and um, their functions are going to be different. Here are the three dense connective tissues. We have dense regular connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue, and elastic connective tissue. First one is dense regular connective tissue. What you'll find when you look at dense regular connective tissue is that you'll see lots of wavy lines. Don't pay attention to the staining color. Depending on the stain, the color will be different. What you want to pay attention to is the pattern of the fibers. If they're wavy and they're running in one direction, it's going to be dense regular connective tissue. These are thick bundles of collagen fibers. And these um, dark areas that you see here, these are nuclei of cells that are kind of compressed within these fibers. Again, this is low magnification, and this is a very high magnification. So you're going to find bundles of parallel collagen fibers, and there's going to be a little bit of elastic fibers, but the dominant fiber in this connective tissue is collagen fibers. Major cell type here are fibroblasts. Again, fibroblasts give rise to new fibers. It makes sense because this connective tissue has lots of fibers in it. You're going to find this connective tissue in your tendons, your ligaments, and your aponeurosis. So tendons connect muscle to bone, ligaments connect bone to bone, and aponeurosis connects muscle to muscle. They're made out of the same material, but the name changes based on the connection that this um, tissue is making. And the function of this tissue is to resist tension or resist pull in one direction because the muscle fibers are really just running in one direction. Here is a close up over here. So, here, um, this is a ligament, and this over here is going to be a tendon. And this is a close up over here.
again, these are two other pictures of dense regular connective tissue that I found. Um, low magnification, high magnification. And here's another picture. Um, this looks about 10x magnification to me. And by the way, um, some of my students think that this is muscle because it looks a little bit like muscle. This is not a muscle. This is a connective tissue. Muscles do not fall into the category of connective tissues. Next, we're going to go over dense irregular connective tissue. And this is made out of the same stuff as dense regular connective tissue. Same material, same, same types of fibers and cells, but the difference is going to be that the fibers in this connective tissue are going to be running in all directions. So that's why it's called dense irregular connective tissue. Again, same thing. You're going to have lots of collagen fibers with a few elastic fibers. They're going to be running in all directions. The major cell type here are fibroblasts. These are going to be cells that give rise to new fibers. You're going to find them in places where there's going to be pull in multiple directions. So it's going to be found in the dermis of your skin. This is um, below the first layer of your skin, which is your first layer of your skin is epidermis. So this is found below the epidermis. It's going to be found in organ capsules. So it's going to be wrapped around your, your organs. And you're going to also find it in your joint, around your joint capsules. Again, the main function is to resist tension in all directions. And this is what it looks like. Low magnification, high magnification. If you pay attention, most of these are collagen fibers, bundles of collagen fibers in different directions. But if you pay attention, you'll notice there's a little bit of these purple stains there. Those are the nuclei of the fibroblasts. And here is a very high magnification over here. Again, these are going to be nuclei of fibroblasts. And here's another picture. Again, it might look like muscle to some of you. This is not muscle. And the last um, dense connective tissue we're going to talk about is elastic connective tissue. So don't mix this up with elastic cartilage. We're going to have an elastic cartilage. This is an elastic connective tissue. They are different kinds of connective tissue. This is a high magnification. This is a low magnification. And as the term implies, there is going to be a lot of elastin fibers found in this tissue and they're going to stain dark. So you're going to find, this is pretty much very similar to dense regular and dense irregular connective tissue. The difference here is instead of having lots of collagen fibers, this tissue is going to have lots of elastic fibers. So, um, there's this switch here in the abundance of fibers. So you're going to have irregularly arranged elastic fibers and some collagen fibers. But we're going to think about elastic fibers here as the dominant fiber. You will also find fibroblasts here. These are going to be cells that give rise to new fibers. Because it has a lot of elastin fibers, this tissue is good for providing stretch and recoil. You're going to find it in places where stretch and recoil is very important. So found in the walls of your large arteries, for example, your aorta, which is the main artery of your body. Um, there's going to be a lot of pressure in your aorta and you cannot afford to have it stretch and then not recoil. So having the ability to stretch but come back to its original shape is very important. And in your bronchi, remember, when you're breathing, um, your lungs are going to expand and they're going to contract. And this tissue provides the right type of flexibility for your bronchi. Here is a low magnification of elastic connective tissue. 
um, as if you really pay attention, you'll see that this looks like dense regular connective tissue, except that it's ha it has a lot more dark lines in it because it has a lot of elastic fibers and elastic fibers stain dark. So if you see this tissue with lots of wavy dark lines, that's going to be elastic connective tissue. And here is another one over here. Okay, so we covered all of the connective tissue proper um, tissues. So we co covered all of these, and now we're going to move on to cartilage. There are three different cartilages found in the adult human body. First, we're going to talk about hyaline and then elastic, and then fibrous cartilage. Cartilage tissue is going to be very strong and very dense. It is avascular, and that means that there is no blood supply. This is the reason why if you tear your cartilage, chances are you're going to have to have surgery because there's no blood supply to the cartilage, and healing is either impossible, or if you ever get any healing, it's going to be very, very slow. The cartilage is going to be surrounded by something called the perichondrium, um, which is made out of dense irregular connective tissue. The main cells you're going to find in connective tissue are chondrocytes. These are when it, these are cells that maintain the cartilage tissue. Anytime you hear the term cartilage, it implies, excuse me, anytime you hear the word chondro, it implies cartilage, and usually it's hyaline cartilage. And you're going to find that these chondrocytes are going to be in these small spaces called lacuna. So you could think about them as having their own little houses. Here's the first cartilage we're going to look at. Hyaline cartilage, this is going to be the most abundant cartilage in the human body, and it is widely distributed. You're going to find it in many different areas. It does have fibers, but the fibers are not visible under compound light microscope. So when you look at the tissue under the microscope, you're going to see this smooth glassy matrix. These are the lacunas, by the way, and within the lacunas, you're going to find um, chondrocytes. One way to remember this is this tissue looks like it has a lot of eyeballs in there. So if you see a glassy matrix with a lot of eyeballs, it's going to be hyaline cartilage. It's going to have an amorphous firm matrix. Again, there is collagen fiber there. It's just not visible. You're going to see the chondrocytes in the lacuna. So the main cell you find here are chondrocytes. The main function of hyaline cartilage is to support, reinforce, cushion, and resist compression. It is a very strong cartilage. Some places um, that you find them, you're going to, it's going to be your coastal cartilage. So um, in the rib area, you're going to find it making parts of the embryonic skeleton, not all of it. You find it in the ends of long bones. If you ever had a drumstick and you get to the very end of the bone and you, you see there's cartilage there, that's hyaline cartilage. Your nose is made out of hyaline cartilage. Trachea, and that's your windpipe. Um, your larynx, all are gonna contain hyaline cartilage. And you'll notice like your ears, you could bend, you could twist your ears. Your ears are very flexible, but your nose is not as flexible. And that's because your nose and your ears are made out of different kinds of cartilage. Again, I want you guys to know the description, know the function, the location of hyaline cartilage. Here are two other examples here. Most of them stained this blue purple color, but I've seen it also stain pink under with certain slides. Again, you 
you're going to find these lacunas right here. They look like eyeballs and the matrix is going to be very smooth and glassy. Next, we have elastic cartilage. This is going to look very similar to Highland cartilage. The difference is the matrix. If you pay attention to the matrix, you'll notice that the that it is going to be it is going to have all these fibers in it. It's going to be dark. It has this dark uh, matrix and that's because there's a lot of elastic fibers here remember elastic fibers stain dark so all of these in the background are elastic fibers you'll still see these eyeball looking things but um, the background substance is what you need to pay attention to it is going to be similar to highland cartilage but a lot more elastin fibers so it's a very flexible type of cartilage you're still gonna see the chondrocytes in the lacuna the main function of this this tissue is to maintain shape and um, allow flexibility so this is going to support the external ear and the epiglottis, not as widely distributed. The epiglottis is constantly like moving up and down, especially as you eat. Um, so it has to have flexibility. Epiglottis, I just wanna talk about what this is. This is the structure that covers your windpipe when you swallow. That's what the epiglottis is. Here's a very high magnification, 640X. Um, these are chondrocytes in the lacuna. This is the background, the, the matrix. And within the matrix, you're gonna find these dark lines here. These are the elastic fibers. Again, this tissue provides flexibility, uh, but it also maintains the shape. And here is another example. As you can see here, what we want to pay attention to here is the background. If it's dark and it has these dark lines in it, it's going to be elastic cartilage. And here is a low magnification here. It's hard to see the fibers in this, but again, the background is dark, which tells me that there's going to be probably a lot of elastic fibers there. Next, we have fiber cartilage. Um, I've seen this stain pink with certain slides, but most slides that I've seen, it stains blue. Um, and when you look at it under the microscope, it looks like blue hair. So that's what it looks like here. It's gonna have chondrocytes and in lacuna, but they're not gonna be as well defined. This is a low magnification here. Again, um, it looks like blue hair, and this is a high magnification. These are going to be chondrocytes in the lacuna. The matrix is going to be similar to Highland cartilage, but it's less firm. Um, and the collagen fibers are very visible here, as you can see, the blue fibers. You're still going to find chondrocytes in lacuna, but they're not going to be as easily, um, as well defined. The main function here is to absorb shock. So you're going to find this cartilage in places in your body where there's a lot of bouncy movement. So um, it provides strength, but it absorbs shock. So you're going to find it in intervertebral discs, so between your vertebra, pubic symphysis, and discs of the knee joint. So again, th these are areas where there's going to be um, a lot of bouncy movement. So it's important to have it absorb the shock. And pubic symphysis, this is what brings the two hip bones together. And pubic symphysis is where they're joined in the front. There's going to be a little bit of cartilage there. And this is important for women when they go into labor. This cartilage stretches a little bit. Not a whole lot, a little bit, but... It, um, it makes the process of giving birth a little bit easier. Again, we could still see the thick collagen fibers here. 
it, it looks like blue hair. It's just how it stains, um, absorbs shock, and you could see intervertebral discs right here. And you can find it in pubic symphysis and discs of knee joint. And here's another picture here. You could see the chondrocytes in the lacuna. And here is a high magnification. So we went over the connective tissue proper. We went over cartilages. And we're going to finish up with bone and blood. Okay, here's bone. Um, there's two types of bone. There's um, the compact bone and there's spongy bone. We'll talk about the functions. Compact bone is going to look like these two. So when you look at it under microscope, it looks like a tree that has been cut. If you look at a tree that's been cut from top, that's, this is sort of what it looks like. And this is going to be spongy bone, and it kind of looks like a sponge. So whenever you take a bone in your body and you cut it, it's going to look something like this. It's not going to be entirely made out of spongy bone, and it's not going to be entirely made out of compact bone. It's going to be a combination. The outside of the bone is going to be made out of compact bone. It makes sense because compact bone is very dense, but it's also very heavy. And inside of the bone is going to be spongy. And again, we don't want compact bone to be all over our bones because it is so dense and heavy. And then the spongy bone here also provides a network for bone marrow. Okay, bone, technically, just remember this, it is a connective tissue. It's going to be hard. It's going to have matrix, but... It's going to be calcified matrix, and there's going to be lots of collagen fibers found in your bone. You will find osteocytes found in lacuna. The bone is highly vascular, and this is why if you break a bone in your body and it is a clean break, the alignment is um, not off, you get the option of letting it heal naturally or having surgery, but the bone will eventually grow and heal itself. And that is because bone is very vascular. The function of bone is to support, of course, uh, protect, and it provides le a lever for muscular action. Other functions are to store calcium. Lots and lots of calcium will be stored in your bones. When we go over the skeletal system, you will see that when your body is low in calcium, it can always take it out of your bone. Or when your body is receiving lots of calcium, it could always deposit it back into your bones. Um, there's going to be other minerals found in your bone. And certain areas of your body have either red bone marrow which is for red blood cell production, and other parts are going to have yellow bone marrow, which is primarily made of fat. Location, of course, your bones. And this is compact bone over here. So um, we talk about the details of this in the second module when we go over the skeletal system. Um, these dark areas that you see here these are lacuna and within this, these lacuna you're going to find osteocytes and osteocytes are going to maintain the bone matrix this is the central canal over here and inside the central canal you're going to have um, arteries veins and nerves <clears throat> and again it is highly innervated so there's lots and lots of nerves going into this tissue. And that's why if you've ever bro broken a bone, you know how painful that is. And that's because this tissue is highly innervated. We won't worry about the details right here for now. I will talk about all of these when we get to the skeletal system. But for now, the important thing for module one 
<clears throat> is to be able to identify the tissue. And this is a really high magnification. This is a really easy tissue to identify. So I hope that nobody misses this on the lab exam. Here's spongy bone. When you look at it close up again, it looks like, like a sponge, sort of. We'll talk about the structures of spongy bone when we get to the skeletal system. But as you can see here, this is lightweight and it's going to provide space for bone marrow. Okay, last one we covered, connective tissue proper, cartilage bone. Now we're going to cover blood. So yes, blood is a connective tissue, even though it's not like connecting parts of your body. It is the main function of it is going to be transportation, but it has also important functions for immunity because you find white blood cells there. The matrix is plasma, and you're going to see lots and lots of red blood cells called erythrocytes and some white blood cells as well. So these are different kinds of white blood cells. We won't talk about these too much in anatomy one. I talk about them in detail in anatomy two. And these red bubble-like structures, these are red blood cells. Remember that red blood cells are donut shaped somewhat. So the center is gonna be hollow and you're not gonna find nuclei in these cells. Red blood cells are the only cells in your body that don't have a nucleus. And that's because the nucleus got pitted out before it entered your bloodstream. So all of these are red blood cells. These are white blood cells. Um, these little fragments here, these are platelets. And platelets are not cells, they're cell fragments. Within blood, you're going to find red blood cells erythrocytes, white blood cells, leukocytes, and platelets, thrombocytes. And you're going to find the location, of course, it's going to be within blood vessels. The function is transport of gases, nutrients, and wastes. It does contain white blood cells, so it plays an important role um, in protecting you from disease and also for providing blood clotting factors. And here is a very high magnification here. White blood cells, when you stain this tissue, white blood cells no longer are white. They're, they're gonna either appear purple or pink and their nuclei is gonna be very well defined. These are components of blood. This is red blood cell, this is a white blood cell, and this over here is going to be a platelet. And here is another tissue of blood. And here's another one. Okay, so this video covers all of the connective tissues, and in the next um, lecture video, we're gonna talk about muscles and nerve tissue, and that will be a relatively short video.